Charlie Finkelstein. He's the president of Shopify, one of the largest e-commerce platforms worth over $60 billion. He's helped scale brands worldwide. I think October 7th changed everything because it felt like um, I began to feel, to get comments, to get messages, DMs, um, posts that frankly were anti-Semitic. Um, and I just, it sort of felt like, oh, that's what it feels like. Well, that's, that's what, you know, my grandmother was talking. That's what my father was talking about. And I think that for those listening that are struggling with that right now, I get it. We're all struggling with it. It is not easy right now to be Jewish, to be a proud Jew, whether you wear a yarmulke or your last name is Finkelstein or you, it is difficult right now to do that. And that's what makes it meaningful because it doesn't actually cost you anything if you're a proud Jew four years ago, it was easy. Right now, now it costs you something and that therefore it makes it more meaningful. And if you wanna be a meaningful person or meaningful people, this is sort of the time to show that courage, that audacity, that pride. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Meaningful People podcast, talking to you from the studio in Valley Stream, New York. Very excited about this episode with none other than Harley Finkelstein. It's a shorter episode, but it is packed with a lot of wisdom. Harley is the president of Shopify. He was the CEO of Shopify at one point. He's the president of Shopify, a multi-billion dollar company that is a household name. Uh, If you've bought stuff online, you've used Shopify. And Harley really has been leaning more into his Judaism since October 7th in a very strong way. And we spoke to him about that in this episode. Thank you, Shlomi Zions, for uh, making this happen. And uh, a big thank you to our friends at Company Builders. That is Company Builders. Are you looking to start a new business and you need help? Starting a new business can be daunting. There's a lot of unknowns. But the people who can help you are at Company Builders. You need maybe an expert manufacturing experience? Don't worry. In China, they have somebody that can help you out with that. Web design, graphic design. Do you need effective web development? Do you need social media management? All those things are what company builders can take care of for you. They've helped hundreds of companies generate millions of dollars in revenue. And they said, you know what? We want to open this up to some more people. That's why we're going to talk about it here on Meaningful People. Companies-builders.com. That is company-builders.com. Make sure to hit the link in the show notes in the description of this episode and get in touch with company builders. I also want to mention a word from my friends at Rothenberg Law Firm, that is injurylawyer.com. Very simply, if you have ever been in an accident, if you are right now dealing with something, an accident that you were in and you are uh, struggling with, what do I do? It's very simple. You head to injurylawyer.com. That is injurylawyer.com. You can hit the link in the show notes or description. It'll take you straight to the place that you need to be, injurylawyer.com, and fill out a free case evaluation. If there are damages, if there's something that happens to you, if you were in an accident, you don't need to just be home upset about it, complain about it, and to shul the shul to your friends. You can do something about it. The first step is going to injurylawyer.com and getting in touch with the Rothenberg Law Firm today. I also want to mention, guys, that we launched something new this week, something brand new, something very exciting. Um, I'll give you a hint. Anina Chigordan. That's as much Hebrew as you'll hear me speak, but we just launched Daka Mishmotit. It is the Hebrew wing of Meaningful Minute. And uh, we have thousands of subscribers already, Hebrew speakers. So if you have Hebrew speaking friends, if you are a Hebrew speaker, I'll put a link in the show notes, uh, the description of this episode, where you can sign up to Dakam Mishmotit on WhatsApp. You can follow us on Instagram. And what a Hebrew podcast coming your way. Stay tuned, maybe. Enjoy this episode. You are listening to the Meaningful People Podcast. The podcast featuring our nation's most impactful, influential, and meaningful people. All righty. Harley Finkelstein, thank you so much for joining us here at the Meaningful People podcast. Great to be here. Thank you for having me. How are you, dude? Doing great. Thank you for asking. It's, uh, yeah, it's great. Um, Things are well. Um, Yesterday was Yom Hatzmaut and was in the uh, parade in Montreal here. and now I'm back to the grind here at Shopify. Amazing. Awesome. Well, it's good to have you here. Um, well, well, first of all, you can't say dude to a Canadian. They're, they're way too proper. No, is that the case? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I grew up in the U.S., so you can say dude. You can say it anything. Okay, amazing. So that's a good place to start. Tell us, I guess, a yeah. little bit about your upbringing. What was that like for you? Born, born in Montreal, grew up in South Florida in Boca Raton. Um, went 
came to Montreal again when I was 17 to go to McGill. Started a t-shirt business, uh, Schmata business when I was in college, uh, uh, 2001. <laughs> went to law school in Ottawa, the capital of Canada. Um, not to become a lawyer, to become a better entrepreneur. A mentor of mine convinced me that law school would be a good sort of finishing school for entrepreneurship. Moved there in 05. Had no friends, no family. Um, met Toby, uh, who was selling snowboards at the time. And ended up becoming one of the first merchants to use what would become Shopify. And that was about 15 years ago or so. Um, and then about eight months ago, in August of 2023, my wife and I and our two daughters ended up moving back to Montreal because if you've been to Montreal, you know that it is one of the most amazing places on the planet. And so we, we we're back in Montreal now. It's my favorite city and um, and very proud of where we live and, and how we live and and uh, incredibly proud of the company we built at Shopify, which has been this, you know, this um, life's work type project for me. Wow. You know, Harley, our time is obviously limited. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. Of course. I want to just jump in. How did we how did we connect? How did that happen? I think that you maybe first of all, I've been following you on Twitter. That's that's where all great people meet, I think. And I guess. Yeah. Um I, I believe you watched an episode that we did with Shlemy Zions about Oh right, about wrapping to fill in at um someone sent it to me. They said watch this and it was about me wrapping to fill in at NRF, National Retail Federation. Right. So like yeah. Jew, the whole topic of Jewish pride, I think really uh, jumped out at you. And I think yeah. that you tell me if I'm wrong, but maybe before, but since October 7th, your Jewish identity maybe shifted a bit. You, how about you? Totally. You, I mean, I, how, how could it not? Um, you know, I'm the, I'm the grandson of Holocaust survivors. My, 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 my paternal grandparents were in the Holocaust. They were in Auschwitz. After the Holocaust, they went to Hungary to a little town called Debrecen. Um, in 1956, once again, uh, Jews were being persecuted and they ended up escaping persecution during the Hungarian revolution, immigrating to Canada. So my father came here as an immigrant when he was a young kid, young boy. Um, and I never really experienced any anti-Semitism. I never experienced anything like that. In fact, you know, I heard stories from my grandparents and from my parents, but like for me, it never, never personally affected me. I mean, I was, you know, as I mentioned, born in Montreal, raised in Boca Raton, like <laughs> Boca, a lot of Jews there, a lot of Jews in Montreal, um, spent a lot of time in New York and LA and Miami, like just, just never experienced that. Um, my, I've always been very proud to be Jewish. Um, you know, my wife and I just built the Finkelstein Chabad Jewish Center in Ottawa. The reason we built that, that, that center was uh, Canada is a G7 country. Ottawa is the capital. There was no synagogue in downtown Ottawa. So the set, the center of town in a G7 capital had no synagogue. It doesn't, you don't have to be religious to know that like, that doesn't make sense. Um, and so we built the Finkelstein Chabad Jewish Center. That's up now. It's a big fam, sort of the largest philanthropic project my wife and I ever did together. We're super proud of it. 250 students go there every single Friday uh, for Shabbos. It's run by an amazing rabbi named Rabbi Chaim Boyarski, who, when I was in law school, knowing I wasn't religious, still came to see me every Friday to wrap tefillin on me. And he would say, let's go to a room. And I would say, no, let's let's wrap tefillin in the middle of the law school. And we connected over the fact that, you know, I was fairly um, aggressive and 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 um, gregarious and, and, and he was kind of shy and, and we kind of brought each other out of our shells. Um, and then, but two years ago, um, out of sheer interest and curiosity, um, my best friend is David Siegel. David's the founder of David's Tea, uh, amazing entrepreneur. We began to create an archive of the greatest stories of the greatest Jewish entrepreneurs of the last half century. So people like Charles Bronfman or Izzy Sharp, who built the Four Seasons, uh, Aldo Ben Sedun. Uh, we've done David Rubenstein. We just uh, put out the episode with Larry Silverstein, who owns the World Trade Center. Um, these incredible people, Peter May, um, uh, these these amazing people that are icons, legends that in some cases, and actually all cases, come from very humble beginnings that have built communities and cities and countries and industries. And so we started to create an archive. So I've always sort of had on my periphery, whether it's the Finkelstein Chabad Jewish Center or it's the Big Shot podcast, I've always had a real connection with my my culture and my religion. Um, but yeah, I think October 7th changed everything because it felt like um, I began to feel, to get comments, to get messages, DMs, um, posts, that frankly were anti-Semitic. Um, and I just, it sort of felt like 
oh, that's what it feels like. Oh, that's that's what you know my grandmother was talking. That's what my father was talking about. And so I think if in in many ways, um, October seventh was devastating, but it was also incredibly unifying. Across, I mean, I, I started the call today before we, we recorded saying that yesterday I went to the Yom Hatzmut ceremony in Montreal. I didn't go last year. I didn't go the year before. I didn't go the year before that. I went yesterday because I felt that was important. And you can disagree with the policies of, of the government in Israel. You can disagree with the handling of it. Um, but the second it bleeds into anti-Semitism, um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fight back for that. I love that. I, I'm I'm curious, you know, as as everyone listening knows, you are the president at Shopify, and you had a long relationship there. Uh, you went from COO, and and now, many years later, you are the president. Being an entrepreneur of such a large company, a multi billion dollar company, are there challenges being Jewish? Are there challenges that that you have been experiencing or facing that you want to talk about? Um. Luckily, no, not, not on the professional side of things. You know, I, I think that, um, you know, companies don't pick sides. Companies are, are there to build product and to make money and to fulfill a particular need. I think individuals are the ones that need to pick sides. Um, so I haven't necessarily, I mean, um, we are seeing a lot of companies on for, I mean, like they are picking sides, unfortunately. Like that's yeah, I, I, I agree. I, I, and I, I disagree with that. I, I, it's not, I don't think that's what it's for. Um, I, I think that you need to sort of, there's some place where you need to separate your own personal beliefs from others. And, and, um, I, the experiences that I'm having personally, look, my, my last, my last name is Finkelstein, very Jewish. I have a podcast where I interview you know, fairly big shots, a fairly well-known podcast now. It's, it's an archive of Jewish entrepreneurs. Um, I put, you know, there's a building in the, in, in the capital called the Finkelstein Jewish Center. Um, I, I don't hide it at all. Um, but I do feel now that I'm on the receiving end in a disproportionate way relative to the last 15 years or 20 or five years of my life where people, I, I, am, I, I am feeling more of that tension. And I think a lot of the tension is, you know, I, I, um, I live in Montreal, as I was saying, and I, I walk from um, our, we have, we have a, port here, a, a little a little office here in Montreal. And I walk, um, I come in a couple of days a week and I walk from here to my home and I walk through McGill. Um, and McGill is not only my, I went to school there. Um, it's a, it's the place where I built my first real company. I mean, I had a little, I had small companies when I was a kid, but it was my first place that I, I, I built my real business. I'm deeply connected. I taught a course there last semester in the business school. Um, and walking through these encampments, I don't, get angry or frustrated. I actually get curious. I want to know, like, I want to engage in these conversations. And in some cases I am able to engage in the conversations and they explain to me why they believe what's happening in Israel is terrible. And I, I tell them then some aspects I agree with others. I don't. Um, but I think this idea of healthy dialogue and debate is super important, but I think that if I have an opinion and others have a different opinion, let's, Let's get into it. Let's discuss this. Let's debate it. Let me explain to you my viewpoint. Let me let me hear your viewpoint. I don't think you can hate something or someone um, that you deeply know and understand. And so I'm trying to create more of that. In some cases, I get the opportunity to have those conversations on the way home um, through McGill's encampment right now. In other cases, I don't, and and I uh, I'm respectful for it. But on the flip side, I I do you know when when someone says something to me that is derogatory on Instagram DM. Um, or something like that. And I, I've received a few of those talking about, you know, I'm not going to mention the, the remarks, but real anti-Semitic remarks. I, like, I just kind of have to ignore it. But I've never felt it up until recently. Wow. So it's that time of the episode to speak about my friends at Grotha, Josh. But who better to speak about Grotha than Josh from Grotha? Josh, what's up? Hey there, how's it going? Can you tell me a little bit about what Grotha can do for companies? We'll start with a website redesign. We're gonna make your website look great. Within around two weeks, we're gonna have the website ready to launch. We're gonna show it to you, you'll love it, and then we're gonna launch it. And then we're gonna start the SEO on the website. In the meantime, we're also working on the Google Maps SEO optimization. We're gonna help your listing on Google Maps rank much higher, and we're gonna work hard on all aspects of SEO in the meantime, which means we're gonna start doing over 50 articles per month on your website about topics that are relevant to your business, what people are searching for, to attract more people, more co potential customers to your website. We're also going to be working on getting the negative reviews to be gotten rid of from your Google Maps listing. 
the negative reviews, of course, no one likes them. They are terrible. They're going to hurt your SEO and we're going to try to get rid of them. And we're going to make a lot of SEO optimizations to the website to make our website rank number one in Google Maps and in the regular search results. At Grotha, we're really here to help you. We actually care about your business and we work with over a hundred companies like yours in drug rehab, home care, assisted living, ABA therapy, nursing homes, and more. We're here to help you get started and let's start doing SEO for your website. Thanks. Thank you, Josh, for that. So guys, make sure you head to growtha.com forward slash meaningful for 20% off the first three months working with Grotha. Let me tell you, I know numerous companies, people that work with Grotha, and they are extremely, extremely successful because of what Grotha does for them. So make sure you head to growtha.com forward slash meaningful and give them a shot because you will be very happy. Let's face it, work is a routine. Not thrilling necessarily, but also not terrible most days either. Fear of job searching while employed can paralyze the best of us. You return to the same old grind, even though you know there's something better out there for you. You guessed it. I'm talking about the new job platform, Purple Stairs. The platform has really taken off. I'm not surprised. Why wouldn't candidates sign up by the hundreds? They have nothing to lose. Employers are looking for people exactly like them, and they have nothing to worry about because the platform has security features that allows them to hide sensitive information and decide to share it with specific employers only. Side effects of joining Purple Stairs may include sudden job satisfaction, unexpected career advancement, and severe excitement. Go and check out Purple Stairs. Candidate sign up for free. Platform is perfect for those seeking a job openly or in confidence. Not affiliated with any recruiting company and no recruiting fees are ever charged. PurpleStairs.com. You know, on this particular platform, we, we have the opportunity to sit down with a lot of different types of meaningful people. And everyone is truly meaningful, uh, but our guests are bringing out and shedding light in very different ways. Some are famous people, some are not well-known people that are living through some very difficult challenges. And I think part of Nahi and my role is to identify in what way our guests are uniquely positioned to infuse meaning into people's lives. And being able to spend some time with you, I think what you're uniquely positioned to do is to empower our guests to identify within their Jewish pride whether you are someone that's on a campus that is being approached by a Chabad shliach who's thinking of wrapping tefillin with you, or whether you're operating at the highest level of entrepreneurship, leading the charge of multi-billion dollar companies, you are able to activate Jewish pride in a way that I don't think any of our guests have ever been able to do. And I'd love to invite you to elaborate on yeah. what your Jewishness means to you and how we can more tap into and access that? Well, first of all, um, you know, to quote um, a famous uh, figure uh, from, from history, uh, Spider-Man, I think with great power comes great responsibility. I think was that Spider-Man's quote? Really? Yeah, I, th I think so. Sure. Maybe, but, but definitely uh, Peter, uh, you know, Parker used to say that uh, in, in, in sort of the old school cartoons. Um, but, it, but it's true. I think anyone who's listening and anyone's watching this that has a platform um, needs to realize that, you know, that is privilege, that is uh, power. And so you have to like, you don't have to, I think you should use that in the most positive, constructive way. Um, my Jewishness is less about God. It's less about following a particular, my, my father um, became religious later in life and, and he's, you know, he's a big part of the Lubavitch community here in Montreal. Uh, you know, he, the rituals that he has and the customs and Kashrut and, and being Shomer Shabbos. And I respect all that. That's just not me. My Jewishness comes from a place of, of frankly, pride um, and community. When I moved back to Montreal in August, um, I got all these reach outs from all these amazing people in the Montreal Jewish community saying, come for Shabbos dinner or where are you going for, you know, where are you going to Rosh Hashanah services and come to my synagogue. And there's this connection that I feel that I have. My, my best friends for the most part are, are also Jewish too. So to me, it's a li little bit less about the religious aspect and more about the, 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 the cultural aspect. Um, the reason that I think this, the Big Shot project or Big Shot podcast is so meaningful to me is when you hear these stories of, Eddie Sunshine. Eddie Sunshine was born in Bergen-Belsen, in a displaced persons camp. It was a concentration camp. And then when the Red Cross came, it got converted to a displaced person camp. He was born there. He came with his family to Canada and they moved, they came to Halifax and eventually took a train to London, Ontario. 
These are very, very poor people. Um, despite all that, Eddie Sunshine created the modern day REIT, the Real Estate Investment Trust concept, and created Rio Can, one of the most important real estate companies on the planet. How did that happen? Um, Larry Silverstein was a poor kid from New York City who looked up at the Twin Towers and looked up at the Empire State Building when he was a kid and said, one day I want to own those. Guess what? He eventually owned those. How the hell did that happen? Um, I just interviewed uh, one of our next guests is, uh, I guess I'm leaking it here, is Leo Cooperman uh, from Omega. I mean, these are s- stories of these people. Um, Fran Weisler, the queen of Broadway, created Chicago, the, the play, you know, one of the most successful Broadway entrepreneurs in the history in the history of, of Broadway. How did that happen? How did it happen? How does Fran Weisler, who is teaching or, or doing plays in high schools, go to become the queen of Broadway? I'm fascinated by the plight of the Jewish people. You know, 25% of Nobel laureates are Jews, yet we're only 15%, 50, sorry, we're only 15 million people on the planet. I think there is a real connection between this hard work and this ambition and this insp- inspiration of story that is so uniquely Jewish that I'm, I'm very, really proud of that. Um, and it, it's my family story also. I mean, you know, my, I mentioned my parents, my father came here as a poor immigrant and built this great life that allowed me to build a great life that's, that, that has created this, this momentum. Um, and my Jewishness is manifested through things that are uniquely me. Um, the podcast about entrepreneurship is uniquely me. I went to law school in Ottawa as a poor student and built synagogue there because it was important. These are uniquely me. It's a very personal version of, to use your term, Momo, like my Jewishness. I'm interested to to zoom in a little bit on that, you know, and, and to really try to get a, a strong message from you. I mean, if there's, let's say, students around the world that are listening to this podcast right now, with Harley Finkelstein and, and they're struggling, um, whether they're religious or not religious, but they want to identify Jewish, whether it's they want to put the yarmulke on their head and they want to, keep, you know, have their tits out and they want to put on fill in publicly and they, and they want to, they don't want to be scared of that, but they're struggling. They're struggling doing that because of what's going on in the world. What message would you give to that student? Uh, courage is not seen in times of peace and tranquility. Like, you know, there's, um, you know, you know, do you guys know that company Carhartt? A lot of construction people wear it. It's like, it's kind of like, um, if you go to a construction site, you'll see a lot of people wearing Carhartt. And it was Carhartt, sort of this cool, like, cool brand. And it's very manual, like, get your hands dirty type of brand. It's a rough and tumble brand. Well, Carhartt has this great saying, which is everybody wants to wear Carhartt until it's time to do Carhartt. And like, it's like everyone <laughs> wants to wear that brand until you got to actually go build something with your hands. Like I don't wear Carhartt. I'm a, you know, Jewish lawyer, entrepreneur. It's not my style. Um, but everyone wants to ha- be courageous. Everyone wants to have pride, but it's more difficult to do that in times like this. But actually right now, this is the time to show courage, to show pride, to show, I don't know, strength. And by the way, there's going to be consequences of it. When I post something on Twitter or X, you can check my feed or on Instagram um, about me being at the Yom Ha'atzmaut um, rally or every Friday, this, I mean, if anyone's followed, you see this every Friday night for the last, I don't know, 55 weeks, Friday evening, me and my wife, Lindsay, and our daughter, Zoe and Bailey, we wish the world Shabbat Shalom. Very simple. We say, we hope you had a great week. We hope you have a great weekend. Shabbat Shalom. And every time I do that, I get a bunch of people responding saying, thank you, appreciate it, have a great weekend. And people that are Jewish, not Jewish, all denominations, people that are atheists, it doesn't matter. But every week, there are a couple DMs that come in that say, essentially, something incredibly anti-Semitic, something incredibly mean, nasty, derogatory. And you know what? Every time I see those DMs, that gives me energy to make sure the following week, I come up with another Shabbat Shalom message. And I think that for those listening that are struggling with that right now, I get it. We're all struggling with it. It is not easy right now to be Jewish, to be a proud Jew, whether you wear a yarmulke or your last name is Finkelstein or you have your name on a synagogue or whatever. It is difficult right now to do that. And that's what makes it meaningful because it doesn't actually cost you anything if you're a proud Jew four years ago. It was easy. Right now, 
Now it costs you something and that therefore it makes it more meaningful. And if you want to be a meaningful person or meaningful people, this is sort of the time to show that courage, that audacity, that je ne sais quoi, that, that, that pride. And that's the reason why to go full circle to how we got connected in the first place. When I got that reach out about wrapping Tfil and I was giving one of the keynotes at National Retail Federation at the Javits Center in January. And someone reached out to me. Yes, he reached out and said, do you want to wrap Tfilin? And he came in and I came to the Javits Center. I said, where do you want to wrap? And I said, right here, right in the middle. And we wrapped. And it wasn't me being, I, I didn't want to be disrespectful. I don't want to make anyone uncomfortable, but I'm proud to be Jewish. And I may not necessarily understand all the elements of the religious side of wrapping Tfilin, but it, to me, it was a little bit of like, yeah, this, this is meaningful to me. And I'm sure some people saw it and thought I was a jerk or thought I was insensitive or thought I was whatever, but it was meaningful to me. And it was yeah. meaningful to us also. <laughs> Harley, thank you so much for your work, for spreading the light. And as we unfortunately encounter darkness in magnitudes and scope that we haven't seen in our generation, people like you that are willing to be courageous and to spread that light, it's, it's what we need. It's absolutely what we need. So I God mean, you bless guys, you and thank you. You two are the manifestation of that. You, you have a show, a podcast, a, a, like a YouTube show talking about this stuff. That is, that is courageous also. Um, but this is the time to make no small plans. And um, yeah, proud to be in this community, proud to be Jewish, proud to be on the show. And uh, thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much, Harley Fingelstein, for joining us. Everyone should definitely check out your podcast. I can't wait to listen to the next episode that's, episode that's coming out. Check it out. Bigshot.show in your browser. You'll see it all. It's really fun. Incredible. Thank you. And uh, best of luck to you on all your future endeavors. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the podcast. Of course, a big shout out to my friends at Town Appliance for being one of our sponsors. It's almost been, almost been a full year with Town Appliance, but they've been doing things for longer than a year. They've been part of of the community taking care of everyone's appliance since 1979. So head to townappliance.com, townappliance.com, and make sure that if you are in need of appliances, especially around the umptive season, which we are in, that you are taken care of with townappliance.com. They are the best. Yala po. Anyways, thank you for listening. Really, really appreciate all of you who listened. Please leave some feedback. Leave a comment on YouTube. Leave a email at nachiatmeetingfulmoney.org. Leave a review. Follow us on Instagram. All 200,000 of you, we are so happy to have you there on Instagram. We are coming back at you with another episode of the podcast next week. Stay tuned. Have an amazing, amazing Antif.